Hey everybody, welcome down to my basement where I do all of my 3D printing and finishing and it's kind of a new hobby for me but I've really fallen into it and I really am enjoying myself. Um, so today is a little video about my workflow, how I print and finish um, figurines and models. Um, but it's also a little bit of a celebration. Uh, my cousin Mark, uh, he has a, his own YouTube channel and it has reached a thousand subscribers and so I have uh, the name of his YouTube channel is the nerd bar I encourage you to go check it out I will link it in the description below and also at the end of this video um, and in order to celebrate the nerd bar where he celebrates all things nerd and uh, especially um, he specializes in unboxing Funko Pop mystery boxes and and collecting Funko Pops. I decided that I would make him his very own baby Groot. So um, my children watch his videos, and they have all of a sudden become huge fans of Funko Pop toys. So I figured with 3D printing, maybe I could share with him uh, one of my hobbies that could be equally as fun and rewarding and financially crippling as collecting Funko Pops. So Mark, this guy's for you. So now let's see how I did it. In order to be able to print a model, you need to have the 3D model downloaded. And you can find the 3D models on websites such as Thingiverse, Colts 3D, and Yegi.com. I picked this particular model of Baby Groot because it's really well done. Uh, I will link the model in the description below. It is a free model. So you download the model to your computer. Once you download the model, you import it into your slicer of choice. I use Cura. And so I am starting with a new project and I drag the file into my Cura workspace and then I make all of the necessary adjustments to the settings and there are hundreds of settings to choose from so there is a bit of a learning curve there and once I'm satisfied with all of the settings that I have chosen I go ahead and I slice the model and what that does is it prepares the model for your 3D printer and outputs it as a G-code file and the, the G-code file is what your 3D printer is able to read to know where to put the plastic and how hot to get your um, extruder and just it's all the instructions that the 3D printer needs in order to print the model. Once the model's been sliced you save it to your computer. I use a Raspberry Pi loaded with OctoPrint to communicate directly to my 3D printer from my computer you can just load the g-code file onto an SD card and load it directly on your printer and run the file from there but with OctoPrint I can control my 3D printer from any computer that's on my network and so I take the file from my computer and drop it onto the OctoPrint interface and then all I have to do is click the print button and the printer will start to warm up while I head downstairs to monitor the first layer. I'm changing the uh, filament right now from brown to green because I want to have it kind of do a, a green thing at the top of his hair. And I'm going to trim this. But I made sure not to use the change filament option because I don't want to purge. I want it to. 
gradually mix the green into the brown so it's kind of like a gradient going from brown to green. We'll see how that turns out. You'll have to excuse the noise in the poor lighting. I'm down here in my printing room in the basement. Um, so here's the model. And I was hoping for a little bit more of a gradient that went between the brown and the green and obviously that didn't work. Uh, my printer isn't set up for gradients. It's only a single extruder. Um, but we'll see what I can do to work with this. What I wanted to do is have the brown fade, fade to green to kind of be like in the movie where the tips of his hair or whatever you want to call this is uh, green but I might be able to recreate that with some of the paint right now though I'm going to smooth this model um, and I use, I do that by uh, using acetone and I buy the acetone from the health and beauty department because this 100% pure acetone that's located there is cheaper than the stuff that you get in the hardware section so uh, at least for me it is this is about two dollars for this whole bottle here so uh, and it goes a long way what I do is I take a brush with relatively short bristles and I dip it in the acetone and then I just rub it over the whole model and what that does is it, it just knocks down the layer lines just a little bit PLA doesn't dissolve in acetone very readily. Um, some PLAs, some brands do a lot more than others will melt and so you got to be careful because there are some brands out there that will just completely get destroyed by the acetone. But most uh, filament and especially the cheap PLA filament is pretty resistant to acetone but what it does do is it will reduce the, um, the it'll reduce the appearance of the layer lines and then just make it so when you do apply your layer of paint you won't see the layer lines under the paint and I'll put up a couple of pictures on screen so you can show I have this eye is untreated still and this eye is treated and you can hopefully see the difference between one that hasn't been smoothed and the one that has and so that's what I'm going to do now and I just open up my acetone and I work straight from the bottle and I dip it in and then I just start working it and the, the bristles kind of scrub the surface and just smooth out those layer lines. And I do it a couple, I, I go back to the bottle a couple times for each spot. And I just will work on the model in sections. So I'll work on the face and then I'll work on the body, then the legs, the arms, the back of the head, so on and so forth until it's all been done. So just like that, the face is done. Um, just a couple of notes. I do like to put the acetone on really wet and brush it out. Um, I feel like that helps get it soaking into the, just the very top layer of the model. Also, your layer line height makes a difference here. So this model has a .15 layer line height. And if it was like a .2 or larger, the layer lines would be harder to knock down with the acetone. So I'd say .15 at the max. And if you can go lower, go lower, because then it would make it even less obvious that, you know, it was 3D printed. And then one other benefit of using the acetone is that it takes the surface from being real glossy like you see here and it makes it a matte surface so if you do have a model that's glossy and you want it matte you can use some acetone to knock that down and you'll see some of these white spots that appear and that's just part of the chemical reaction that's taking place on the surface you can just use a little bit more acetone 
and just clean those away like that after everything's dried and it'll go away. But this is all going to be painted anyway so leaving behind the white residue won't matter because the paint will stick to that just as well it'll stick to the model. I'm going to finish up the rest of the model and then I'll come back for the next step. Okay, our little group character has been treated with the acetone. It's ready to be painted. I think that what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try to artificially blend this brown into the green and we'll see how I can go. I don't have a whole lot of paint colors with me right now, but I do have this brown oxide that I think is pretty close to his color. So I'm going to give that a shot first, and then we'll go from there. Just use a coarse brush here with a little bit of water on it. Let's see what we can do. Something like that works. And then after this dries, I'm going to do what's what I call, I don't know if it's what it's officially called, but I'm going to do a wash. And it'll get dark paint into all the nooks and crannies and all the little bark inclusions and everything on his body. And it should help blend all of this in. We'll let this dry and then I will up, um, come back and, and apply the wash and then we'll work on the details after that. Okay, so as you can see the paint dried and it blended pretty well and with the uh, color of the PLA filament. Slightly, just a slightly different hue, but it won't matter once we get the wash on, everything will blend in really well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of a black and mix it in with the brown paint and um, it'll make a little bit darker shade and hopefully we can accentuate the all the shadows and all the deep um, folds or whatever you want to call it, these vine-like features on his body. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to mix together my paint and I'm going to try to make it really wet. That's actually probably just a little too dark. So I'll just add a little more brown. water we want to make it really thin so it flows into those cracks before I start let me grab a roll of paper towels because that's going to be part of the process So we'll start on the back, a less conspicuous area, and you just basically brush it on, make sure you get it in all the nooks and crannies, like this, and then when you're done brushing it on, grab your paper towel and you wipe it off. And what you're left behind with is kind of just a um, little bit, maybe like a higher contrast. Um, the, the, like I said, the shadows are kind of emphasized or enhanced 
makes him look a little bit more real. So I'm going to do that over the rest of the body. And thin this paint out even more. Now we don't want this paint to dry before we wipe it off. Because we don't want we don't want the paint on the high spots, just on the low spots. And we want to be able to wipe off any excess paint. So I just work it on one part at a time. Just like that. Don't want to press too hard with the uh, paper towel or you will soak up all the paint out of the low spots where you're trying to get it. Work on his head here. Alright, we're doing pretty good. So I will continue and I'm going to hold off, I'm not going to do this part, the top part yet, um, or I'll do the rest of his body and his face off camera and then when I get to the top of his head, that's when I'll come back to you guys. So here we are at the very end of this uh, process, he's pretty much been highlighted now with the dark wash and all that's left is just to do the end, the, the top of his head here. I, I'm going to just apply this wash um, and try to not uh, obscure the the green color too much um, but I don't think it will because once I wipe it off it should be uh, it should come off pretty easily and still show the green underneath so we're just gonna do this my only concern is that this wash is going to stick to the part that I have already painted a little bit better than it's going to stick to the plastic. So we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Okay, back to that. There we go, that's exactly what I was looking for. I'm pretty uh, satisfied with the way that that turned out. Let's get the top of his head here. Okay. Once this dries, it'll all kind of, it won't be so glossy anymore. But, you know, in the movie, they had young Groot and just the tips of his hair were green like this, kind of like frosted tips or whatever you want to call it. And that's kind of what I was trying to replicate here. And I think it turned out pretty good. So now the next step, I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes. And then I'm going to, I'm going to work on his eyes. And uh, then do the finishing touches. And then this guy is going to be ready to go. Okay, his... Uh... He has dried to my liking, at least like to the point where I can work on him again. So now we're gonna gonna give him black eyes here. This is pretty delicate stuff, just because you know the eyes are small. The brushes that I use aren't the most precise brushes, and the paint isn't really doesn't flow the best. So. It's going to be a challenge to get nice crisp lines with this, but I think I could do it. Okay, well, now that while the paint's wet, 
you know, the eyes look really good, but they're, they will go dull as um, the paint dries. But I've got a little secret weapon. It's pretty obvious, but I'll come back once these eyes are dry to uh, make them look alive. Alright, so the last step in this process is making his eyes look like they're alive and shiny. So what I use is just some nail polish like this. I don't know what this is. It's called double duty. It's really thick stuff and it self levels and so you don't see any brush marks or anything which is good because then it makes the eyes look like they're made out of glass so um, again it's pretty delicate work and the brushes that they put on these things are just little nylon brushes so they're not the most versatile but if you concentrate you should be able to get it just right Don't be afraid to lay it on thick, because it will find its level, and the thicker the layer, the, the more realistic the eye looks. I like to start from the center and work my way out. One down, one to go. Alright, so I'm actually going to lay him face down so the clear won't run into the corners of his eyes. And, um, we'll see how that turns out. So here it is. Here's the finished product here. So I have to say this turned out really well. Um, this is actually the second baby Groot that I've made, um, but this whole um, highlighted hair thing was just kind of an idea that I had, and I think it turned out really well. I hope you all like it too, and I hope this was able to give you a glimpse into how easy it is to get into 3D printing and how easy it is to finish these prints with very minimal tools and supplies. Everything that I've used... I will link down in the description below their Amazon affiliate links. If you if you buy through my link, uh, I get a little bit of a, a, a kickback from that. So if you could do that, I'd appreciate it. Um, also, go ahead and like this uh, video and subscribe if you're interested in this sort of things. Um, my, my channel is dedicated to woodworking, um, auto mechanics, and apparently now 3D printing, which is totally fine by me. Basically, it's whatever I'm interested in. So um, make, make sure you swing by uh, the Nerd Bar uh, YouTube channel as well and check out my cousin Mark. He's very funny and he makes something as simple as collecting Funko Pops an interesting topic. So thanks again everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.